Hello everybody. Welcome to the Science of Intentional Creation podcast with Zazu. This is episode number eight. All right, I know you have an introduction, but I am jumping in. Good. I like the title of our talk. Say it again. The Science of Intentional Creation. I like it because so many of my friends, those of you who I have met, those of you who have watched or heard me, and so many of my future friends, those who will watch, hear me, or meet me, so many of my friends are great cosmic beings. Every single one of you is a great cosmic being. Which means you are the universe, just in an ittle bittle space called a body. But you know, it's not your body that makes you feel little, that limits the great cosmic being that you are. What does that really is your misperception, your great misperception that you are little, that you can't ask for the world, for the sky. How do you think you ever got to the moon if you weren't asking for more? It is almost like the best kept secret. We'll tell everyone they can't ask for anything and just a few of us will reach for the stars. My friend, Miss Kaylin, she was saying, have you ever heard anyone say before Zazu, before me, have you ever heard anyone say that the law of self is such that it says that you are, according to the universe, what you say you are. You are, according to the universe, what you say you are. So if you, my friend, say that you are timid, then law of attraction comes in and works up a storm. If you say that you are asking for the stars, law of attraction comes in and works up a storm. If you say you are reaching the stars, you can just imagine what's done with that. And yet, I have talked about how so many of my friends are so apologetic in their presence in their being. They don't say a thing before they have apologized for walking into the room. Can you imagine what you are saying that you are? So here we are in the science of intentional creation, which I really like to say is science means the knowing of what you want to experience because it's all created for you. You don't go into a special kitchen and conjure up recipes to create anything. It's all about what you experience, isn't it? But you call it creating, so I play along. But I want you to look at that. The knowing of what it is that you are going to experience. How do you know? How do you Tell law of attraction what you want to experience. How do you be intentful about experiencing what it is that you want to experience? You tell the universe how. You tell yourself. Because no friend of mine can come apologizing, can come in self-doubt and expect to show up and have anything given to them. So today, my friends, I want to talk to you about asking for the stars. I like that, asking for the stars. Because step one is asking, is saying that you're going to have them, is saying I am reaching the stars. And then my friends, step two is very, challenging when it is that you have been a victim to this great secret. The great secret that 
we're going to tell them they can't have hardly anything. They have to apologize, just like that cat, for walking in, in this case, into the scene. How rude, as she would say. They have to apologize. That puts you at a place of not even letting, for most of my friends, not even letting yourself imagine what you crazy desire, what you know you are, what you not want. Not want, because I know that you want it, but I say more than wanting it, it is who you are. It is what you are meant to be and experience. And yet, it is that apologetic self that walks into the scene that has denied it, has already diminished what it is that you are, let alone what you attract, but I use them interchangeably, Just has diminished your own intentionality before you've even walked in the room. So, <clears throat> for example, my friend here wants a new house because he has one, two, three, seven, eight, but that's not enough. So he wants a new house. And you see, watch that first thought that jumps in saying, he has eight, that should be plenty. Why? Why would you diminish yourself by thinking that about my friend? Because if you think that about my friend, you are diminishing yourself left, right, and center, as they say. My friends, if you are putting any thoughts to anything that you see that aren't, any thoughts that aren't grandiose, then you are limiting, you are diminishing, you are pulling the reins back. And, my friends, it is, frankly, a bit of a heartbreaking thing to see from where I generally stand, watch. And we don't have such a thing as heartbreak. But it is a little heartbreaking to see. Because as it is that we stand and be over and watch the experiential life system, and we watch you all going about in your days, we get close by watching and we tap into a little of the energies like feelings. Just a little. And we get a sense of it. We get a sense of the heartbreak that you are not acknowledging within yourself when you have diminished something before you walk into a room. Don't diminish his eight homes because you don't know anything about them. They are a part of his real estate portfolio and this is how it is, my friends, that you expand into yourself, that you expand into the cosmic version of yourself. You say, Where's the ninth? I'm reaching for the ninth. And you don't. You don't put it down not in yourself and not in another, because if you're putting it down in another, you are putting it down in yourself. On the other hand, if everywhere you look, you say, you go, what do you mean nine, 10, go for 10. When you look around and you walk into a room undiminished, and you are happy to be there, and you see the wonderful things in others as you walk in, you are seeing the wonderful things in yourself. You are now a part of this great secret, a great secret society, if you will, in which, my friends, everything isn't at your fingertips, it is your fingertips. It is you. Intentionality means that you put yourself, I, in intention. In what it is you are intending to be, in what it is you are intending to attract experience. And that, my friends, is the science of intentional creation or experimentation, as I like to say. And I say to you, my friends, when it is that you put aside and start to question the fact that you have been victim to the secret, you have to watch what you ask for, as if 
there is any limitation in life. You have to make sure that there's enough for everyone. What a load! What a bunch of baloney! That's my nice version for you. Next time I won't be so nice. Do you see people with plenty? Do you see endless leaves, endless sky, endless ocean? Do you see an endless galaxy? Do you think that you end somewhere? Ha! If you think those things, you are still, if you're still limiting yourself, you are still falling victim to that great secret. And I say, my friends, I've exposed this secret. So now you know. You know it's not true. So then the next question that always comes, and I already am anticipating what he's going to say. My friends say, how, Zazu, how? How do I break out of this? And I know, I watch. I know that either you don't know that you agreed to this secret so long ago you have forgotten. I know that you have forgotten that you are a great cosmic being. I know. Question it, my friends. Question it. Because when you question it, you start to stir something in yourself. My words alone start to stir something in you that starts to vibrate in you because it's the truth. Because that energy vibrates the energy in you. It awakens the energy in you that knows. And as soon as you have started that process of awakening and of questioning, you start to look at things differently. And then, my friend, start to question every time you walk into a room and look down and get humble. There is nothing to look down at. There is nothing to be humble about. This is your cosmic universe, your whole creation already created for you. So you start to question why you're getting shy, timid. Start to question alone why what you desire most, like your house, isn't as big as you want it to be in your imagination. If you can't handle reality yet, let your imagination soar because I know that that can be difficult for my friends as well. You can use every trick in the book, and you should, my friends. Every trick, imagine it, tell yourself, I know it's not real, but for pretend, let's imagine a big ninth house. Do whatever you have to do. Go see an open house. Do whatever you have to do to touch the energies, to give yourself permission to start to touch the energy because touching the energy, my friends, means letting yourself begin to do little things. Last weekend, my friend here went and saw an open house. That's a great thing to do. Not for any reason like he's ready to buy or any such thing. He's letting the energy come in. He physically touched it. He is starting to bring that energy in. And if he never goes to an open house again and he never thinks about it again, he'll shut it down. He'll shut himself down. If, on the other hand, when he's out and about, he sees another house. When he's on the internet, he chooses to see another house. He lets himself think about the parts of a bigger house, feel the parts. Start to really bring the energy forward and the very first thing, say, I am reaching for a larger home, a ninth home, reaching. I am getting a little closer and closer and it's speeding up as I go for that ninth home. Then, my friends, your energy is completely different. Your energy is on a track of magnetism. And there's attraction for you. Magnetism. You match it more. You are energetically a better match to it. You are magnetism. You are attracting it. 
Whereas my friends, the minute you walk in a room and say, oh, I can't possibly for all these reasons. And you can come up with very good concrete bullshit reasons until you're blue in the face. Those reasons are endless. And you, my friend, are cosmic. That endless list will come to an end. Your cosmic being will live on forever. So at some point, you'll tire of the endless reasons. But I am telling you, if you want to be intentional, like me, speed it up. Don't wait an eternity for everything that you are. Let it come much quicker. I know, now I've been talking up the whole time. Go, friend, go ahead, my friend. Well, actually, we're just about out of time. I know, and I didn't even <laughs> let you use your introduction. However, um, However, I had a lot to say. You did, and I want to thank you for that. If you'd like, we could continue on another set, but it's entirely up to you. Sure. Next. All right. So we're going to continue this in part two. So stay tuned for <laughs> part two to get bigger still, and I'll let my friend talk in part two, All if right. it pleases you. Okay, we're going to uh, continue this in part two.